On the north shore of Lake Superior in Ontario, the water in and around Peninsula Harbor seems pristine, but below the water's surface, a legacy of pollution remains. This small community of about 4,000 people, the town of Marathon, was, for many years, home to a pulp mill and chemical plant. Unfortunately, these industries that were once the economic lifeblood of the community contributed more than jobs. They left its harbor with a legacy of contaminated sediment. This is just one of several environmental problems in this area that prompted Canada and the United States to formally recognize Peninsula Harbor as an area of concern in 1987. The 1987 Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement originally identified 43 Great Lakes hotspots or areas of concern. Twelve were Canadian and five were shared between Canada and the United States. The 2012 Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement Protocol reaffirms Canada's commitment to cleaning up these hotspots. Areas of concern are areas where historical pollution has resulted in environmental issues and degraded water quality. Each one has a plan in place to help the surrounding communities deal with the legacy of contamination. Under the Canada-Ontario Agreement on Great Lakes Water Quality and Ecosystem Health, the governments of Canada and Ontario work together with many partners, including Aboriginal communities, municipalities, industries, conservation authorities, the public and others, to implement these plans and address historically polluted sites such as Peninsula Harbor. The ultimate goal is to restore environmental conditions at these sites. Four of these areas of concern are harbors located in Lake Superior, Thunder Bay, Nipigon Bay, Jackfish Bay, and Peninsula Harbor. The Peninsula Harbor area of concern includes the Marathon waterfront and extends four kilometers into Lake Superior. The main environmental issues in the Peninsula Harbor area of concern were high levels of chemicals, such as mercury and polychlorinated biphenyls, or PCBs, in sediment and fish, loss of fish habitat, low populations of fish, and impacts to organisms living at the bottom of the lake where sediment lies. Most of these issues were resolved once the local pulp mill improved the quality of its wastewater and the town upgraded its sewage treatment plant. However, sediment contamination remained as the last unresolved issue. The highest levels of mercury and PCBs were found in sediment located in Jellicoe Cove within Peninsula Harbor. Environmental monitoring revealed that the contaminants were spreading to the rest of the harbor. This was an important issue to address. PCBs and mercury are known to accumulate in the food chain. As a result, these chemicals pose a greater threat to fish-eating birds and mammals and people. In 2012, the governments of Canada and Ontario co-funded a major sediment remediation project in Peninsula Harbor at Marathon, Ontario. The project cost $7.3 million, Former pulp mill owners contributed $3 million, Environment Canada contributed $2.7 million, and the province of Ontario contributed $1.6 million. Several options were considered to address the sediment contamination in the Peninsula Harbour area of concern. The first option, known as capping, required 15 to 20 centimetres of clean sand to be placed on top of the contaminated sediment. The second option, mechanical dredging, involved lowering a clamshell bucket into the water to pick up contaminated sediment, which would then be placed on a barge for future treatment and or disposal. The third option was a combination of capping and dredging. The final option was monitored natural recovery, where scientists periodically monitor natural processes such as river sediment deposits covering contaminated sediments over time to ensure site recovery is happening as expected. 
about a year and a half ago, Dick Brewer sat down and started developing what we call our consultation model. After many studies and technical reviews, Environment Canada and the Ontario Ministry of the Environment, with input from the Ojibwes of the Pick River First Nation, the town of Marathon, and local stakeholders, decided to use two approaches to manage the remediation. One was to cap the area where the mercury and PCB concentrations were higher than the acceptable amounts for the site. The second was to leave the less contaminated sediments in deeper areas of the harbor to recover through natural processes. The cap is about 23 hectares in area, or equivalent to 28 football fields. Medium grade sand, shown on the left, was used to cap 67% of the area, and coarse grade sand, which is more like gravel, shown on the right, was used to cap the remaining 33%. Coarse grade sand was specifically used to reduce sand movement in areas with high currents. The thickness of the cap in these areas was also increased from 15 to 20 centimeters to ensure the contaminated sediment remained covered. Medium grain sand came from a local source. The coarse grade sand came by barge from Manitoulin Island. Silt fences commonly used at construction sites as a means of containment were placed around the sand that was stockpiled on the dock to prevent the sand from entering the water. Once the sand supply barge was in place, a clamshell bucket picked up the sand from the barge and swung it over to the designated placement area. Next, the bucket gently released the sand close to the surface of the water. allowing the sand to fall gradually through the water column within the turbidity curtain box, a three-meter mesh barrier suspended in the water column by floating rods attached to the barge. This operation was repeated over the entire capping site. Silt curtains, which are another form of floating mesh barriers, were also used to prevent the sand from depositing in two nearshore fish habitat areas. To ensure that the job was done right, it was important to monitor various aspects of the project on an ongoing basis. Throughout the construction of the sand cap, the consultant monitored water quality, looking for any signs of mercury, PCBs, or fine suspended particles. No signs of problems were observed during construction. Once the sand cap was in place, core samples were taken to make sure the cap thickness was correct. The health and safety of workers was also monitored each day. During the capping process, community members were able to tour the site by boat. Environment Canada's project lead was on board to describe operations and answer questions. In Canada, a great deal of progress has already been made to protect and restore the Great Lakes for generations to come. The environment has been restored in Collingwood Harbor and Severn Sound on Lake Huron and Wheatley Harbor on Lake Erie. These areas have been removed from the list of areas of concern. These are significant accomplishments given that many of the issues affecting these hotspots can take decades to resolve. Spanish Harbor and Jackfish Bay have both been redesignated as areas of concern in recovery. That means all planned remedial actions have been completed, but the environment needs more time to recover. The capping project in Jellicoe Cove started in late May 2012. It was finished in August of that same year. The project will reduce the spread of contaminated sediment to the rest of the harbor. This will reduce the risk of exposing fish and wildlife to contaminants, 
create a clean habitat for plants and animals, accelerate natural recovery, and reduce further health risks to people and the environment. A long-term monitoring plan will be implemented to monitor the CAP's effectiveness and assess the recovery of underwater plants and organisms living at the bottom of the harbour. The capping project was the last remaining remedial action that is needed to be completed within this area of concern. The monitoring results will determine when Peninsula Harbour can be removed from the list of Great Lakes areas of concern.